Uh, well, this is basically like a US style primary. So we are electing the EPP's lead candidate for the European Parliament election. So it's a triple election. EPP candidate, who can run the European Parliament elections and who can become Commission President. That's what at stake. Well, I mean, in the European Union, we should get used to the idea that the current administration is doing a voluntary marginalization from world politics. And when that happens, with building walls, protectionism, trade tariffs, withdrawing from multilateral agreements, it leaves a power vacuum. And someone needs to fill that power vacuum. And for me, that someone is the European Union. It's a three-step process. Number one, you have an open discussion with Orban and his party. Number two, and that's what they're doing right now, negotiate the declaration of values which Orban signs. And then number three, if he signs it, he continues in the party but sticks to the line and stops talking about illiberal democracy, which is an oxymoron. Number two, if he doesn't sign it, he's out. This is working very well. Great. How is it to have the different campaigning and campaigning? You have been used to it in Bavaria, so. <laughs> Well, we have a very positive competition inside of the EPP family, and that is great to see this, because we are practicing democracy as a biggest political family in the European <laughs> Union. That is what we can show to people, different personalities, different candidates. And after Thursday, when we have the outcome of the, uh, on the table, then we will combine our forces and try to convince the people in Europe to vote for EPP. Well, the outcome of the, of the elections in America is a clear <coughs> signal that the two sides, the two you say, groups inside of the society of America are now strongly represented in, uh, on the, on the decision-making process on the Washington level. That is uh, not a good signal because it will give probably a blocking situation in Washington. Right. That is even more important to understand that now it's the time for the Europeans to stand up. So I would wish that we are not always only looking to what is happening in Washington. I would wish that we as Europeans understand that we are the biggest and largest uh, economic power, a strong uh, uh, power of values on global level, and that we can implement and, and, and argue for our European way of life on, Europe, on global level. Uh, well, I, Alexander Stubb has very, been very, very clear that uh, there is no room for, for a party, there should be no room for a party in the EPP group that goes against the EU's key values, whereas Weber has been more uh, conciliatory in, uh, in, in this issue, uh, perhaps because of the domestic situation in Germany as well. So this is one of the key differences. A secret ballot, but, but of course, as it looks like, it will, be, it will go to, to Weber at this time. Mm. But, but I, I think we have a, a central European, uh, so, so Mr. Weber uh, represents the traditional uh, central European conservatives, cons conservatives with his values. Uh, his background is somewhat different from, from that of Alexander Stubb, who represents the Nordic uh, liberal wing of the, of the, the conservatives. Uh, Stubb has been uh, in, in many governmental positions in Finland whereas Weber has been uh, the leader of the EPP party group without uh, governmental experience from Germany. So different uh, value backgrounds, different, uh, well, uh, geographical pro profiles and, and different political backgrounds. Two quite different can candidates from the same party group.